Hey guys, welcome to another Ruby on Rails base video. Uh, these aren't complete builds like you see on another playlist on my channel. Um, more I'm adding to that soon, don't worry. Uh, but this is just kind of a stuff I've been working on when working in Rails kind of scenarios where I feel like it'd be good to share just some behind the scenes stuff I'm learning or have used in the past that have either come from documentation or just experiences dealing with Ruby on Rails on my own, uh, whether it's my day job or just on my side stuff, a vast framework. So there's a lot to, to know about, but it's one of those things where you just ebb and flow until you get uh, more comfortable. And then over time, more things start to feel at least familiar. So in this video, I'm going to talk about debugging in Rails. And more or less, it is a series of steps you could take based on either tool selection or just built-ins that come with Rails to allow you to really debug whatever it is you're going for or trying to find when running a Rails app. So for instance, if you're trying to do some um, unpredictable code to create some instance of some object or something in Ruby, you might need to like log that type of process to see what, what happens when you do things. It's kind of a trial and error process until you get it right. and really uh, debugging is the way to get that right at first. Of course, test-driven development will kind of tell you what will uh, work and what won't as well, but it's one of those things you'll want in your arsenal as you progress as a developer. Um, I'm by no means an expert, but I'm just sharing this because it's stuff I've been paying attention to because I want to learn more about the inner workings of Rails. There's so much magic that goes on underneath that sometimes we take it for granted with a framework like this or any framework in general. Let's focus on debugging. And the first one I'm going to focus on is one that just comes by default and it's a method or a helper called debug. So I have here scaffold a quick app using a kickoff template I created. This one's based on Bulma. So this was my first iteration of my first template. If you have it, it's on my GitHub. Uh, maybe I'll link to it in the video. If not, it's totally, you don't have to follow along in this. This is more or less just practical knowledge that you can use on your own. So what I'll show you first is just, I have a basic blog with posts and it, there's a title and a text field for the copy, which I called body. Uh, so in there we can edit a post, of course, update a post. Uh, we can always create a new one. It's pretty basic stuff. There's no authentication going on. So, I mean, I have this built in from the application template, but it's not nothing's being checked on if this user is even signed in or whatever. So disregard all of that for now. But what I want to show you first is, say, let's go visit this first blog post. Very plain Jane looking thing. It's nothing special. But what I want to show you is this uh, helper we can use to essentially just debug what is the post instance variable we're passing in here. So we have this based off of what's in our controller in the post controller. I did a scaffold, so all this came stock. Um, so on the show action, there's nothing here, but we get that by default because of this before action. So the before action references a method in our private um, methods in our class here, which is the post controller class. So this refers to this and we're passing only use this on the show action, the edit action, the update and destroy action. All of that said, we've got this private method called set posts and we go and find the params based on the ID in the URL. So we can pass through this ID and find the post based on that. So a cool thing is if you're never sure what params means, you can debug that on its own. So I'll copy that. Let me go to show and just debug that by doing this typical ERB code, but we want to wrap it in a debug. And then we'll see on the front end, this come through. So these are what, is all coming through this hash within different access parameters. So this is built into Rails. This is the beauty of the framework. So we can get all this stuff based on things we pass through. So with that passed through, we can see things like the controller this was based off of. We can see the action that we're on. So this is the show method, for instance. Uh, and of course the ID, which is the one we're referring to in the controller. That on its own is pretty powerful. Uh, but what about the post itself? Maybe our post is a huge object and we want to see more about it. So here we go. We get that back with the debug method. 
And this is super useful if you're working on a big app or a um, model that has a ton of properties that you're not quite sure what maybe you rename something, maybe, maybe what you called it, all those things. Uh, and it's really useful to get that data back on the front end, just so you think either to remind yourself or just know what's coming through. If you're not sure, maybe someone else made the table on the database and you're not quite sure what they did, but this, this can kind of tell you. So without the debug method, we can do a uh, simple format. This is built in by the way, but we can do to YAML on the object, the post instance, and then we'll get back kind of the same concept of what we just passed through, but in a more of a plain text form. So if you want it to look the same, you can pass and add um, some pre encode tags here just to kind of give it the pre formatted look. Uh, I prefer just the debug method. This, this does the kind of the same thing, um, but it's up to you how you want to process that. So I'll just undo everything there. And we'll go back to debug. There we go. So I, I find myself using this all the time. Uh, it's it's nothing crazy, but it's something that, uh, you know, it's just super useful when it comes time to figure out what it is you need to access within the view or anywhere else spec based on what's coming through through your params or your controller, etc. Uh, another ones you can use is the inspect method. Uh, this is useful for things like uh, arrays that come back. We can do something like this in the view. I don't know, just um, one, two, test, three, five, randomness. But then you can just call inspect in the ERB view. And that can come back on the front end, just doing that. So you can actually see uh, the code that you're, you're authoring come back. A uh, hash kind of looks like this kind of stuff. And then there's like a name, which does the hash rocket thing and has some Andy kind of concept. Um, I think that's how it authored. I'll probably just error out. Yeah. Inspect. Yeah. So we get that back. It just basically converts it to a string so you can read it. Random, random debugging there. If you need something like that in your arsenal, um, uh, besides that, that's kind of the view based thing. Uh, there's another built in one called, if you look in your gym file, web console. So if you've used the rails, if you've gotten the rails error log in the past, uh, say you go to a post that doesn't exist, this is going to be a different one here, but, um, often there is with the, with the red band, I'm using a different error handler. Uh, what is it called? Better errors. It's called, if you use the rails default, there's going to be a console at the very bottom and that is responsible from a gem called web console uh, which is useful for doing literally uh, console based logic inside your view instead of going to the irb client which would be something along the lines if you quit your server uh, and you do rails console that's kind of what happens there so you can do things in here as well to debug so you could, i could say user dot all and oh, there's none because I don't have any, but I could say post.all. There's a couple. So that's cool. Um, that's a great way to debug too, if you want to just see more of that and get context of what, what's going on in your database. On top of that, the web console, like I was just talking about, this comes by default and you'll find it in your development group in your gem file. So what's nice about this is if you ever want to have a console in your web view, you can do so. Maybe we'll add it in the show and we can actually output that console like so anywhere. It doesn't really matter. You can put it up to the top. So if I go to a show page now, look at the bottom here. We have our look console right in our view. So this is useful for deep debugging in line. So I could get post on all post.title, for instance. Hey, there it is. Cool. Um, it's probably really small. So sorry if it is, but at post.body is that whole post.created at. So that's useful for like in context based stuff. Um, I wouldn't probably use this on my own unless I just I'm having a hell of a time debugging, uh, but it is cool to know that that's there. 
Um, that's also on the default error handling page when you hit a Rails based error in the app too. So that's nice. On top of that, we have one called Bybug, which is in both development and test. Bybug is way more vast in terms of its offering. Um, you can do quite a bit. I haven't done a ton with it personally, but it's nice for when you want to get an instance of something when it happens and output into your logs. Uh, so maybe we'll try it with creating a new post. So we'll go to post right after new, we can just type by bug. And this will like initiate that kind of shell prompt for when we create a new post. Uh, we can go and try that now i'll just create a third one so another gem in our arsenal is the by bug gem and it comes by default as well and we can use that in our development and test environment uh, particularly useful for catching stuff while it's happening uh, in essence say i want to uh, debug or by bug my post new creation method and we could just type the keyword by bug here what this will do is when you go to create a new post on the front end or wherever you could do it in the console as well, it'll actually halt the process. And if you go to your logs, you'll see uh, where our key term was and the arrow indicating where it actually is halting. So this would fire next if we just said to go ahead and run that. Uh, a neat thing when you get into this mode, Bybug has its own little instance running. So you can type help and get all these methods according to what you want. Um, there's a ton here to deal with. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything, but you can just kind of get a sense of what you can do. And if you want to see, say, the next step in the process, you can just do step. Uh, it'll go down to um, the next step after the post.new and just continue down the line. There's quite a lot going on. So this can go for a long time. Initially, this doesn't end up actually creating the object unless you really wanted to. You could type, I think, continue or finish. The new post form is, is shown, so that's what we want. So you can do this anywhere in your view, in your controller. Um, so even on the show, we could just do it there. I'll go back. Might need to restart server. Um, continue. There we go. We go here and go to view it'll do the same thing so we can see in our console oh we're going here um, the action controller method uh, we can do say step or next whichever you want to do and just kind of just see how all this works so i'll just do continue just to get through it and then we get through the show page so all those things are helpful for finding bugs in your code um, i don't use it a ton i'm not to where i'm i'm writing a ton of Ruby code to do all of these type of debuggings, uh, but it is useful and it's nice to have in our arsenal just by default even, which is great. So just like we query for stuff in our controllers, uh, stuff like this, post.new or post where or whatever happens, uh, we could do the same from basically the command line. So Ruby console, the Rails console, excuse me. And you could do things like that to initialize or create a new post. So post.new, uh, you have to know uh, obviously the constraints of what a post is. So you could just do posts. It'll tell you to do post connection. You can kind of disregard this, but it goes like that and does everything. Command K will clear that out. But if you hit post again, you'll get the actual fields on that model, uh, which is actually the table in your database. So if I want to get post.title, Obviously it won't work because I don't have an instance of the post, but if I get post.last, which will be our second post, the last one created, can assign that to a variable. So I like to debug like this a lot of the time. Uh, one thing to note is you can do control D on a Mac to get out of that. If you do Rails console and then I believe sandbox, this will load um, IRB, but any changes you add, as you can see here, will be rolled back on exit. So if I post dot destroy all, which is kind of crazy to do, but it tells you it kind of just fibs what's actually going to happen, but doesn't necessarily do it. So if I go and hit control D, you'll see it roll backs, rolls back all of that. So if I go back in with the original one, uh, we can do post dot all and we'll still have our data. 
which is pretty useful. So if you're ever worried about manipulating data in this command line instance, definitely use the sandbox flag that's useful. I think that's mostly it. What I like to do often is, especially if I have a user instance, is define a variable inline. So um, I don't have a user created, but if I do have a post, maybe I want the first one and I want to use that instance going forward. So we could say post equals post.find ID one or first. And then we get that one. So from here, here on out, I could change that title to post changed, something like that. And then we don't need any um, semicolon or anything. You just hit enter there. It'll it'll change it, but you still haven't saved it. So it's a it's not numerable. So we we'll want it or immutable, numerable. Yeah. So we want to hit post that save, and then it will update that title. So if we reflect on the front end, just to prove my point, or you could just do post. It'll come back with that new string. Uh, we could see it in action in our views. This should update the changed. So pretty nifty stuff. So uh, like I said, my favorite is debugging in the view. I'm a very visual person, so it's a concept that you can utilize uh, on your own if you want to do it that way. I think it's the quickest way to find a bug or spot the data you might need. Uh, another gem that's useful is pry. There's a specific gem called pry rails we'll want to use. So let's go find that one. There we go. This should use pry as our default Rails console. Bundle again and see what happens. I'm hoping it's just automatic. See if they have docs. Description, group development. Yeah, we should be good. So then we could do in our development, once this installs, we can do Rails console and pry should open by default. Yeah, cool. So then you could get posts at all. The neat thing here is you could see actual data and, and it's color coded. It's kind of fruity looking, uh, but it's neat to see different context of stuff you're looking at. Posts.last.id. Oops. I don't have that instance variable. So we need to do pass ID and then to capital post refers to the model. So we get the ID of two. So pretty cool stuff. Um, if you don't like pry, that's okay. You don't have to use it. Rails console is plenty enough, but this is kind of gives you a little few, few extra bells and whistle, whistles, some syntax highlighting. Hopefully you found that useful. This is just stuff I've learned along the way. I'm not intending to be a know-it-all with this stuff. So if you have other ideas or other ways you debug your Rails code, please feel free to let me and everyone else know in the comments. Uh, besides that, continuing on, my uh, series based Ruby on Rails builds called Let's Build with Ruby on Rails. Uh, the next one in the pipe is the API based app with probably a, a JavaScript framework on the front end. Um, so there'll be actually two apps talking to each other and kind of just doing some logic there. For that soon, it's time consuming to create, but I plan on getting that going very shortly. So uh, hang in there. And again, thanks for watching. All right, peace.